2020 presented itself as a year of promise, new beginnings, and overflowing abundance. At the beginning of 2020, we were just really excited about what was going on in the church. Season is always very packed and, and a lot of fun, um, but there is another level of, of what was happening, what we are seeing with, with people showing up. We were in the process of this evangelism challenge, and it was really exciting to see them taking on the challenge of evangelizing. And we had a number of things that were on our radar screen. We wanted to plant hundreds of churches. We wanted to do more in the way of evangelism in our own community. Breaking news tonight on several fronts on the coronavirus pandemic, the shockwaves. The number of people who've contracted the coronavirus continues to grow more than social distancing. And that's an aggressive measure that's taken to help contain an outbreak or slow. But within weeks, we found ourselves isolated from those we love. Our cities closed, our jobs in jeopardy, and our very way of life shut down. All of us felt our earthly securities shaken, our emotions taxed, our faith tested. It was such a dramatic shift going from doing so many things to all of a sudden having nothing at all. There's no question about it that once the coronavirus hit, we had to change some of our plans. That was a little bit discouraging, you might say, in some ways. But on the other hand, it meant that we had to get more creative. So I was looking back in my journal and the week leading up to our church shutdown, we had an emergency elders meeting on a Thursday night prior to Sunday. And the decision was made by our leadership to um, close down worship and go to an online platform for at least that eight weeks. And Pastor Trent said, we're not going to have anybody in the building this weekend. And we need to be able to show our service online. Well, that wasn't even in my plan until the following year. We jump into sort of a panic mode and Dave Hannon, our technical director, he's like, all right, we're going to make this happen. The first Sunday stepping up to the front and I remember I opened with an announcement. It's so good to see all of you, or at least to know that you can see me. We're glad that even across distance, we can worship together. The preaching during that whole season of time really felt quite disconnected from the congregation because I'm not staring at their faces, uh, I'm staring at a camera. In fact, it was so disorienting that we set up a little mannequin in the back by the camera to uh, mimic a face, but actually that was more awkward than actually just looking into a camera. I do remember the first time, first service online sitting here and essentially getting action. It was the first time in 20 years that I've led worship for an empty sanctuary. It was sad to be worshiping at home alone, personally. I was also really sad about the hard, hard decisions that I saw lots of families have to make. And so as pastors and as a session, I remember multiple times us just praying for the marriages of this church, that God would strengthen them, that God would bring people to reconciliation, that God would actually do a beautiful work in these families' lives that, um, to be quite honest, had really hard things going on in their life that the pandemic revealed. And while we were shaken, God was not. I think one of the things that is really true for people that go through hard times is that you actually look and you see how faithful God was in the midst of that hard season. And I saw that particularly here at Covenant when it came to the shepherding ministry of the church. One of the most encouraging things that happened throughout was receiving messages on Facebook from families who are worshiping in their living rooms. And just that point of connection where in any other time we wouldn't have had that. We would have just been isolated in our homes. Yet through this gift of technology and through the great team at Covenant, we're able to somehow still be connected. 
I think that it surprised me that we came out stronger on the other side. We were able to come back together as soon as we did and that God has continued to grow our ministry in spite of the pandemic instead of watching it wasting away, we're watching it flourish. So I expected as the pandemic really began to grip the world that we would see fewer and fewer opportunities for evangelism by all of our partners. And I was pleasantly surprised that there was in many cases record or unprecedented growth of gospel opportunities, number of people coming to Christ, people being baptized in some of the most unlikely areas. 2020 gave us a reach that we don't, I don't think that we would have had without COVID having, having come in. There are people that are now at Covenant that wouldn't have been here if we hadn't been live streaming. Yeah, the first Sunday back when we had everyone in the room, I remember getting up to preach and just being overwhelmed with uh, joy at that you know, we were starting to see some semblance of normalcy. It's really good to see all of you. <laughs> it's, it's really nice not to just look at that little red light in the back of the room, I gotta tell you. <laughs> it's good to worship together. It was, uh, it was really powerful and it, I, it caused me to just be so thankful to God that ordinarily we're not preaching to an empty room. And, you know, ordinarily we're all able to be together. God brought new life into the world. God brought new souls into the kingdom. God brought home covenant family to himself. The capital campaign was completed, the ground broken. And I just really hope that we, we sense that loss that we had this, this last year and that we come back with that renewed sense of gratitude and that infuses our worship. The church gathering together on a Sunday during the week, whenever it is, to be with one another, to pray, to study God's Word. And I look forward to seeing how that actually cultivates people's hearts and their desire and their hopes for being together in the body of Christ for this next year. We're going to continue discipleship. There is not another answer to this. Our children, our students in this culture need us to disciple them, and we need to be about that in a strong and intentional way. And I think what we learned from 2020 is that we need to keep our focus on Jesus and the gospel, that our mission as a church really is an orienting statement. It reminds us of what we do as a church. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. But we're going to develop and deploy fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ who are going to make disciples in the family, community, and world. And while this will be a year we will never forget, it will not be for the hardships, but for the undeniable truth that no matter what the world throws our way, our God reigns.